Welcome to the first of many blog posts about the construction of Lakeshore Lines. Lakeshore Lines is my fictional railroad. I'm Jim Robillard, and we're here in sunny Marco Island, Florida, or more correctly, Naples, in a new building where we'll be putting together this railroad over the next several years. The idea behind this railroad came from uh, the modules that uh, we had constructed as part of the uh, Midwest High Railers, the Independent High Railers Midwest Division. I was a part of that for over 10 years. And when the group broke up, I uh, felt it was necessary to uh, resurrect at least some of the modules. And so uh, luckily I was able to uh, get a hold of Jerry Zeman's engine facility, which we have here, which we'll talk about in a moment. And of course my passenger yard. So that was a 52 foot passenger yard uh, that my son and I and some others had built, a um, big part of our layout. And of course, uh, Jerry's uh, engine service facility here. So the challenge was in putting together um, a layout plan, which we'll look at here in a moment, was how to incorporate modules into a permanent layout. And that may sound easy, but it's really not. And we struggled uh, for over six months with different layout plans and putting that together. So we'll share for you today, you know, a look at that plan. Um, last August, fortunate enough to buy a building here in Naples. It's one of those condominium storage buildings and it's approximately uh, 30 by 100 feet long. And uh, today begins the, the construction of the layout. We spent the last uh, month or so uh, redoing the lights. Uh, since the layout will take up about three quarters of that uh, square footage, um, and the building was uh, lighted with uh, eight foot fluorescent tubes, I didn't really want to uh, get into having to change those out at some point and trying to figure out how to get up into a 16 foot ceiling to uh, change fluorescent tubes over a layout. So we've uh, switched all the lights out to uh, LEDs um, and it's really well lit. Uh, of course we can control those uh, if we need to with uh, the appropriate dimmers. And uh, um, this is an air conditioned building actually, um, boxy floor. So it's really quite nice. Behind me here you see um, the curtain wall that covers the other quarter of the layout. RV is stored there and also my wife's art studio, the Brush and Lens Gallery. So approximately, uh, I have about 75 feet by 30 feet uh, bathroom and uh, workshop area. And uh, let's take a look at the uh, overall plan here. Let's take a quick tour around the layout. As I said, uh, the layout is built upon two uh, major pieces that were part of uh, IHMD, uh, Jerry Zeman's uh, engine facility here, and my passenger station and yard here. So we're using that as the uh, basis. As you can see, we're putting in a new module here to connect those at about a five degree angle running back down. On the west end of the engine service facility, we'll be adding a transfer table in a freight classification yard. Also on the west end of the passenger terminal, we'll be adding a uh, commissary. Uh, it was, uh, the tracks were originally built to uh, accommodate that building. On the east end of the um, passenger station, we'll be adding an REA and post office. That'll be an overhead building, much like the passenger station and the layout was originally built to accommodate that building although it was never built as we move along around uh, the layout we'll have an industrial focus on most of the layout um, starting here with um, basically what i've tried to do is look at the cars the freight cars that we have and uh, accommodate those industries on the west end of the station, there'll be uh, tracks to handle our various industries, such as cold storage, a paint plant, resin plant. As we swing around into the uh, center peninsula, 
that side of the view block um, to the south or bottom of the layout that you see here, that will all be a um, switching and industrial oriented uh, layout with the many in industries that I've collected over the years. As we round the uh, peninsula, center peninsula, um, we're going to uh, start our grade. Eventually we have to, of course, drop the 16 inches down to the staging yard. So on the reverse side of the U block, we'll have a more uh, rural oriented uh, scene. We'll have an interchange track that is uh, nominally to the uh, Fairport, Painesville and Eastern, uh, which serviced Fairport Harbor, uh, which had both coal, but uh, primarily the diamond alkali plant and uh, various other chemical plants. As we round uh, the first turn to the back wall where the um, mountain is, we'll keep our elevation uh, descending to go underneath those tracks. And in the far corner to the upper right here, another mountain in a rural uh, setting and village with coal mine, it's a BTS uh, coal mine, coal tipple. So we'll have a reason for running uh, coal trains on the layout. Uh, but that village primarily will be uh, oriented towards produce because I have such a large number of reefers, a lot of uh, canning and uh, fruit plants, similar to what's on the north shore of Lake Erie. As we come back around uh, the back wall, again, we'll be descending to that uh, towards the 16-inch uh, drop and the staging yard that runs underneath um, basically Jerry's um, engine service facility and the freight yard. So let's take a look at that drawing. As you can see here, uh, that creates um, a layout that's basically a dog bone. So that it is loop to loop with um, the layout on the upper level, basically in the middle. So in theory, you can run Chicago to New York, Chicago to Buffalo. In theory, have a point to point, which is really uh, just the, the two ends of the dog bone. Our plan is over time to uh, have operating sessions. And so we wanted that. But yet um, for a viewing session, you know, the track is obviously um, capable of just running trains in a looping fashion. Going back to the first level, there is a dispatching station here, uh, and the intent is to uh, use touch screens and programmable logic. Um, the control boards uh, in the yards here that control both the passenger yard and the engine service facility all diode matrix and those are all uh, logic oriented uh, boards so those are already built uh, the new control panel that will for the uh, freight yard will use programmable logic probably uh, Arduino um, mini computers um, to control um, and Raspberry Pis to control the various uh, switches and routings at the end of the day, the intent is to uh, have the whole main line um, controlled and switched uh, from the dispatcher station with all the industries um, controlled uh, manually. And of course, uh, in what I call the hole here, there'll be uh, operators for both the passenger station, the engine service facility, and the new freight yard. So that's a quick look at the layout. Now this layout, uh, you know, is a very loose, loose interpretation of uh, Cleveland, Ohio and points east and points west. So uh, as you saw from the uh, layout diagram, um, this is sort of the, uh, the center of uh, Chicago to New York or Buffalo. And uh, my upbringing in northeastern Ohio you know, I uh, lived near the uh, Nickel Plate and uh, New York Central tracks in Euclid and Willowick, Ohio. 
and uh, my grandfather worked for the New York Central for 42 years. So hence my uh, uh, love of the New York Central, but also the nickel plate. So our attempt here is to put together uh, basically a, a hub from which we can run uh, in a, in a uh, operating uh, fashion, uh, both freight and passenger, um, from uh, this hub uh, to points east and west uh, in sort of a, a fictional environment but yet one reminiscent of um, the uh, North Shore of Lake Erie and uh, those New York and uh, Nickel Plate uh, railroads. So, you know, here on the uh, engine facility uh, laid out today um, is actually the blueprint for Collinwood Yard. And as you can see, uh, you know, the engineering drawing, this is part of the valuation study that was done at uh, start of uh, hostilities for us in World War I. I have a lot of pictures from that valuation study of the various facilities in Collinwood Yard and so those will serve as an inspiration as well when we detail um, the buildings here um, in the engine service facility. I uh, was uh, born and raised in Cleveland. I remember some of Collinwood Yard uh, and going over 152nd Street and uh, I don't specifically remember the uh, the roundhouse, which is uh, to the left of 152nd in this uh, shot here, but I do remember the facilities to the right. Um, and so, as we look down, um, and as you can see, you know that was a very large facility with uh, was a major component of the New York Central's. Uh, there was a you know engine uh, building facility. Uh, passenger repair, freight repair, um, ice house owned by Swift, obviously a big classification yard. So we'll be incorporating uh, some of those features uh, in the layout. So take a gander, we'll be back at you later. Um, a lot going on uh, over the next few months. So thanks for listening and uh, taking a look at the layout.